What's going on guys? Tony here with another comic book video. All right, this one is based off an editorial I'm currently writing. It's gargantuan, right? Um, I probably won't have it out until next weekend, but I want to do like a, I was going to say a quick video, but this video may run a little while because it's kind of big. I want to talk about, I guess, what you would consider the golden age of comic book movies. Not golden age comics, all that movies movies specifically basically i think since 2008 we've been in the second one the second golden age i know you're only supposed to have one golden age i think comic book movies had two of them we're currently in the second one right now 2000 it began in 2008 but i'll get to that we're getting ahead of ourselves here so let's back it up um the first golden age i always say started with the trifecta, the holy trinity, and they're all Marvel movies too. Blade, X-Men, Spider-Man. Why are these movies so important? Because before that, good comic book movies were few and far between. Let's go back now. The first legit full-on comic book movie with a high budget and everything was appropriately enough. Superman. Superman was the very first superhero, so it makes sense that he would be the first guy to get a superhero movie. I know there was, you know, serials in the 40s. The Adam West, t um, you know, show produced the movie. I'm talking about legit, full-on Hollywood production. Superman, 1978, I believe, was the first one. Richard Donner, classic, amazing movie. Then you had to follow up Superman 2 with the cellophane mess. All that bullshit. Another one. It's like, oh, shit, two great Superman movies. What happened after that? The rest of the 80s. <laughs> Let's just be honest. There wasn't any good superhero movies at all. You had the first Marvel movie, Marvel licensed movie, Howard the Duck. A movie, come on, it's trash. You had The Punisher. You had Supergirl. <laughs> Superman 3. Superman 4. The, the 80s was just a wasteland. Like, Superman 2 was the only good comic book movie to come out of it. If I'm missing any, please let me know in the comments. But that's pretty much it for the 80s. Terrible, terrible movies. As a matter of fact, a little bit of a segue. Because of Superman 3, I hated Richard Pryor for many years. People would always talk about, hey, this man's a comedian genius. I'm like, that dumb black guy from Superman 3, that guy sucked. It wasn't until I actually saw his comedy, I saw his guy, the guy was the genius. I'm like, okay, I understand, but I hated the guy for years because of Superman 3 and the horrible cyborg woman and that the movie was stupid. So that's the shit we had to deal with. Then at the end of the 80s, there was a golden light from a dark character, Batman. Tim Burton's Batman, um, another fantastic movie. But see, the last good superhero movie, 1980, 1981, I believe. I, I might be getting a date wrong with Superman 2 there. We should go with dates, but I'm messing up here. Anyway, 1980, 80, 81 to a 1989. Shit, that's a long time. But Batman, even though it wasn't exactly true to the books of Superman, I mean, ba Batman was killing people. It wasn't true to it, but it was dark. And it was, you know, like I said, it wasn't true to the comics, but it was really gritty and fucked up. So and that, was, that was good. Then you had... Batman Returns. Here's where we get things get a little bit sticky. Some people didn't like Batman Returns. I loved it when I was a kid. I saw it again. I appreciate its weirdness, but I understand the criticisms. But it was Batman Batman Returns. Then, then the nineties went on. Batman Forever. Batman and Robin. Trash. What else did we have? We had... It, it, it makes me sick just revisiting this stuff. Steel. Remember Steel? Um, and there were other movies. I probably should have had a list up, but a lot of Drek came out in the 90s. Oh, I forgot about the freaking Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren, too. That was in the 80s. Terrible. Um, now, as far as... Uh, there were I mean, but there were some good movies, so not to get too um, bad here. Um... The first Ninja Turtles movie was fantastic. Still holds up to this day. The Crow, another great movie from the 90s. Um, even to a lesser extent, personal favorites. The Rocketeer, 
and the Phantom, and um, even Dark Man, even though it wasn't exactly a comic book, good comic book like movie. Um, but yeah, you had yeah, you, you still had a lot of bad stuff in the nineties. You had that, that shitty Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie. Um, yeah, it was just bad. So a lot of a lot of bad movies then. So it was like two decades of mostly shitty superhero movies. And then Blade came out, and it was like, whoa, this is this is. Who, first of all, we all knew who Blade was, comic book guys. We knew who he was. He was the Vampire Slayer dude, you know. But he wasn't exactly popular. But that was a good thing because it gave. Um, the movie producers at the time deliberate do whatever they want with Blade. And originally, I just found this out today, actually. Um, originally, it was supposed to be a spoof. But uh, David, uh, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but he's the guy who's writing um, Batman vs. Superman. He was like, no, let's, let's make it dark and serious. There's one key difference. Now, this is where, where the tide begins to turn. This is why where um, the golden age starts. Because before this... The mentality was basically, hey, these are comic book movies. They're supposed to be stupid. Um, they're for kids. Let's just make it silly because it's a, it's a guy dressing up in a costume. It's supposed to be silly. The people that were behind the, you know, these movies, that's their mentality. With Blade, it was like, hey, Blade is a cool character. Let's make a really good movie based on him. And, you know, the same mentality went with X-Men. It was like, hey... Um, we can't have them looking like they did in the comics with these goofy, colorful costumes. Gotta make them, you know, look more realistic. And just for the, just for full disclosure, I was one of those people that was against it. I was like, black leather, this is fucking stupid. I'm glad they they, they, they went with the black leather. <laughs> um, so that's what started the, the first golden age, basically. It was a, a mentality of, hey, let's not, let's not try to just... Hey, here's a character, famous character. Let's make money off of him. It's like, hey, let's make a really good movie based on this character. Let's stick true to and make this character work in the comic books. Obviously, you got to adapt it to the medium of movies. But, you know, basically everything we loved about these characters, they brought forth. So you had Blade. You had freaking X-Men, right? And then before we get to the big one, Spider-Man, the other component that made these movies work now was... And I know it sounds shallow, but it's true. Special effects, CG finally caught up to, you know, where superhero, you know, basically they, they got to the point where these superpowers could be shown in a credible way. Before that, it, it looked silly. It really did. You can, like, authentically replicate these powers that you see in the comic books on screen. With the advent of CG, however, changed everything. Um, now, granted, the first Blade movie... Um, it had kind of effects, but it was good. This would be rectified in Blade too. Even Guillermo del Toro, who directed that movie, he was like, "Hey, I love that first Blade movie, but I felt it had could have had better effects." So when the next movie came out, it was great. So anyway, so you had Blade, you had X Men, then you had Spider Man. After Spider Man, forget it. The, that's when people knew, okay, comic book movies are serious fucking business. Now with Spider Man, again, with, because of the special effects. You were able to portray him exactly as he was supposed to be. This was in the days of the cheesy '70s show with Spider-Man, or, or you know, or even the Japanese one. This was legit. Like the, the guy from the comic books is on the fucking screen. This is crazy. And then again, it also helped that Sam Raimi, the director, he loved Spider-Man. You know, specifically the John Romita Senior Stan Lee era, and that showed on, in the movies that he directed. That, that love for Spider-Man it came through. So. Like I said, once you had those three movies, everybody's like, all right, comic books, let's fucking go. And then those three movies, um, you know, Blade 2, X-Men 2, Spider-Man 2, those came out, and they were even better than the original ones. I mean, like, without exception, Blade 2, that, that fight sequence that you had at the end, were just zipping around, it was like, holy shit. That, that's the kind of stuff we read about in books, we finally got to see it. X-Men 2... Was I what I loved about X Men Two was it felt like a movie that just had mutants in it. It didn't feel like a comic book movie. And Spider Man Two was just like, and it took me a while to realize the genius of that movie. It was perfect, no perfect, fantastic. Um, this is, I mean, by the time X Men Two hit, that's when I, I person was like, okay, guys, th this is the shit is real now, because 
I was thinking back to when I was a kid. I mean, for you old school guys, I used to love Wizard Magazine. You, I know you guys remember this if you read comic books. Wizard Magazine, they had this um, column, you know, um, casting couch, right? And they had one for X-Men, you know, who they wanted to be an X-Men and stuff. They got Patrick Stewart, right, for Xavier. But, you know, me and my friends, we would read this stuff and be like, man, wouldn't it be cool if we get movies as cool as, like, the comics? And the day was here. It's like, not only did we have an X-Men movie, we had two X-Men movies, and they were fucking great. Same thing with Spider-Man and Blade. Like, oh, my God, this is incredible. But that's when I, I say the first golden age died. That That's when it came to an end, basically. And no, I, I was considering ending this video. I'm going to just keep it going. Um, that's when the first one ended, basically. Uh, we had, then the mentality set in. Actually, you know what? I will stop the video. I'll do another part next, later.